All right, thanks for coming today. I am really excited to be here. Thanks for the intro, Jeff. And today I'm gonna to talk about customer experience mapping and how it can improve user experience. And to start off, I have a little video for you, actually. <laughs> So this actually doesn't have a whole lot to do with my topic, other than, <laughs> other than it's really funny. And um, at this time last year, I was in Brazil with my colleague Michi Broman, who you saw in the video. And we were working with a company called Zap. And today I'm going to talk all about my experience creating a customer experience map on that project. So it's a buzzword that we've heard for a couple of years now in the industry. And what, basically what it boils down to is visualizing all the touch points between your customer and your company. And those touch points could be anything from you know, word of mouth, so talking to a friend about a company, um, maybe talking to customer service, could be online, could be from a mobile app, or it could be in a physical place like a store. So we've heard about it um, a great deal at this point, but what's all the hype about? So when you step back from just considering the UI and you think about your customer's entire experience with your company, you find unexpected opportunities. So customer experience mapping can help you identify user stories, it can help you make design decisions, and it can help you sell your ideas um, internally and externally. So I mentioned that I work with a company called Zap and they are based in Sao Paulo, they're a real estate company a leading real estate company in Brazil. And they're incredibly UX-minded. We felt really lucky to work with them. Um, but you wouldn't get that impression from their website. So this is their um, customer portal or where someone would go to search for homes in Brazil. And you can see it's pretty dense, pretty ad-heavy, and that's why they hired us. So we set out to do some upfront user research, a little bit of concept development, and then um, interaction design. From there, we would test the designs that we created, make refinements, and go into development. So the point where we created the map was right after the user research and before concept development. So we could use the findings um, from that first phase and use the map for the rest of the steps in the project. So we set out to create a home-related decision place, basically a one-stop shop where someone could go to find information about buying homes, whether they're just starting to think about it, if they're in the process, or maybe they've just moved. <clears throat> so we knew very little about real estate in Brazil before we went, or Brazilian culture with regard to real estate. Um, so we're really coming in with fresh eyes. But that wasn't a disadvantage at this point. It was actually an advantage because it gave us a reason to dive more deeply into the research than we normally do. So early on, um, we learned that there's no multiple listing service uh, in Brazil. And this is interesting because here, every, uh, every website has a centralized data source where they can find information on homes that are for sale. But learning this, we knew that we'd have to come up with a different solution. It was, it was kind of a game changer. Um, so learning this made it even more clear that we were working in unfamiliar territory and we need to get a hand. So we partnered with a company called Insitium. They were our research partner down in Brazil. And they helped us to gather data both in the user research phase and in the usability testing phase. This is a photo of their lobby in their office in Sao Paulo. So Michi and I flew down to Sao Paulo to meet with Insitium and perform the user research. So we had eight in-home user interviews. Uh, it was a mix of renters and buyers. And we asked them about what it was like to search for a home in Brazil and what the challenges they faced throughout that process. Something else we learned early on, that um, the middle class is the majority for the first time ever, which actually makes doing research there really interesting because for the first time, people in Brazil can afford airfare, luxury goods, um, new technologies more than they have been able to before. You can imagine how that would make uh, buying real estate more interesting because everyone is thinking about the next bigger, better thing. So a lot of people are 
moving out of communities like this and into homes like this. This came up over and over again in our research. So I have a fun little diagram here. It's a little bit washed out, but um, one of the questions I always get when I explain that I did research in a foreign country is how did it work to use a translator? So I thought I'd include this. Um, basically, our research partner from Insitium would speak directly to the participant, and the translator would be speaking into a headset while I was listening in real time. And most often, this would happen around someone's kitchen table. And what we're doing is asking some pretty detailed questions about um, what people's motivations are throughout the home buying process. Um, you know, what time of day do they go look at homes? What tools do they use to compare homes to each other? Things like that. In addition, we worked with participants to fill out a worksheet that looks similar to this. And what we wanted to know is what their experience was like at each point in the home buying process. So we wanted to get their positive and negative reactions to, um, again, before, during, and after. So we used the findings from the interview when we asked those detailed questions and the findings from this worksheet to compile um, them into the experience map, the customer experience map, which looks like this. And I don't expect you to be able to read this, but what I'm gonna do is walk you through what we mapped. So at the top we have the actions and goals of people going through the process. Um, at the beginning, they're defining in step one um, what they could afford, where they wanted to live, things like that. Step two, they're actually performing some searches, mostly online. Um, and at the very top, you might not be able to read it, but the second step is the um, during section. So under that, we have, um, we have comparing homes, weighing the pros and cons of um, the homes that they're interested in, and then finally um, choosing a home, making a decision. And afterwards, they're um, signing the contract and moving in, pretty typical stuff. In the middle here is really the meat of the map. So we have all the different touch points between um, this customer and different aspects of the experience. So um, each row represents a different touch point. The top one here is people. So we found that throughout the process, people are constantly talking to their loved ones, their friends and family, um, whether it's getting advice about what neighborhoods to look in, um, you know, getting their approval on a home they're choosing, um, or just getting their opinion. It's a very um, relationship-oriented culture. Uh, the second row down is the agent or agency, and this was pretty much expected. It works very similar to the way it does in the States. Um, the one exception is that when they're first um, contacting the agent, they would either do it face-to-face -face or over the phone. Um, very rarely would people be communicating via email for that first encounter, which is totally different than what you would think of for the States. Um, the third row down is places. So, oh, sorry, the internet. Um, so as you can imagine, people would be performing searches uh, online for homes that they're interested in. And something we learned here actually is that most times people are starting their home search from Google, not actually from a, um, a website like Zap. So they might get to Zap in the end, but that's not where they would start. Um, also, there's no um, crime rate data available in Brazil. That's something that's readily available in the States and often that type of thing shows up on a real estate site to show you what neighborhoods are safe. Um, but here, oftentimes people use the internet to look up news headlines for a neighborhood that they want to move to um, to determine how much crime has been in the area. Um, third down, places. So people would, of course, visit the homes that they're interested in, but also they would just walk around a neighborhood and see what it's like at different times of day. And it's actually a method that they would use to search for homes, look for, for sale signs in windows and call the number on the sign. Finally, devices. So people were using their laptops and smartphones throughout the entire process, more so in the beginning because that's when they're performing a lot of searches, but um, it was consistent um, throughout the whole process. So at the bottom here we have satisfaction level. We asked uh, participants how satisfied they were at each point in the home buying process, and even though it's at the bottom, I want to stress how important this metric is. It's a, it's a really great way to gauge your company's success. You want to make 
your customers satisfied with your product or service. So you can see that um, when they're in the process of defining and searching for a home, defining parameters and searching for a home, they're pretty excited. They're pretty excited about moving and thinking about their future, what their new life is going to be like. But when it comes time to compare and choose a home, there's a dip. Um, and that's because they're not really finding the homes that fit their parameters or um, they're just overwhelmed with the amount of options that they have and they're not able to make, a, make an informed choice. But then they commit to one decision, they sign the contract and they're moving in, so they get excited again, and then at the tail end they have to deal with the headache of renovating and painting and whatnot. So you can, you can start to see how this generates a pretty common user story. You can kind of put the pieces together. Um, and even visually, when you look at the whole map without even reading anything, you can see that there's um, that dip in satisfaction level, but also a gap in the touch points at that same spot. So we learn that people are frustrated at that point in the process, but they're also not getting much support from the other touch points. And this is one of the biggest findings that um, we got out of doing the customer experience map is just how those relate to each other and where there's an opportunity. Um, so these were, these were the parameters that we felt were valuable to our team to move forward. Uh, you can imagine how you could modify what appears on the map to meet, be more valuable to your team. So you might include the opportunities that you identify directly on the map, or you might have the duration of time a user spends at each step to kind of gauge where they're most invested. Um, and finally, you might um, use keywords, descriptive words that participants mention at um, key points in the map. So it's all about um, designing the map so that when it comes time to start the design process or take action, um, you have a lot of valuable data to go from. So another fun fact. I think that there is one person um, at the conference from Brazil who might know what I'm talking about here, but <laughs> traffic really kind of blows in Sao Paulo especially. Um, and this was kind of an unexpected finding for us, and, it, and it's a huge motivator for people, and it relates directly to real estate because um, people want to live near public transit so they can avoid traffic, which means that properties near public transit are extremely desirable and extremely expensive. Um, so this was actually one of our key takeaways. And I have a little story here. We were, um, Michi and I were driving to a participant's home for an interview. We looked up directions and on the map it said, uh, normal time to get to your destination was 20 minutes. In current traffic it was an over an hour. And if you take public transit, it's 35 minutes. So you can, you can start to see a snapshot of what people are dealing with there. Another key takeaway um, the doormen are kind of the unsung heroes in the real estate market in Brazil because there's no MLS data, there's no crime rate data. A lot of people are going to the doormen of apartment buildings to get a sense for what it's like in that neighborhood. Uh, they're asking about crime rate data, but they're also asking about what vacancies there are or what um, homes have sold for recently. We learned that people are using all kinds of things to compare homes. Uh, there was very little consistency here. So it might be uh, creating a spreadsheet, using email folders, um, the notes app on their phone, things like that. Also, we, we predicted this, but we confirmed that smartphones were used um, consistently throughout the process. And finally, that Zap was a front runner among the competitors. So these are all great findings and definitely actionable, but you could probably learn a lot of this by doing a standard research study. And the thing about doing research in anticipation of creating a customer experience map is that it forces you to gather data that you normally wouldn't. Things like the fact that deciding which home to buy was the biggest pain point in the entire process and that um, buying real estate is all about relationships. Like we saw on the map, people are communicating with their friends and family throughout the entire process and the doormen. It's just a, a very verbal, very relationship-oriented culture. And we learned that this is a continuous process. So even when um, people decide on a home, they move in, they're, at this point, they're thinking about, you know, what renovations can I do now to optimize my resale value in a few years? 
Um, this was actually a really interesting finding um, to our client because after someone buys a home, they consider them, you know, that was the end of their um, journey, but in fact, it's continuous, so they're still a customer. And finally, that a lot of people are starting from Google. So, you know, if we were going to do a standard research study, we'd probably bring someone into a lab, show them the website, and ask them to complete some tasks with it. Um, but we would never find out that they never see the homepage. They just do a search for two-bedroom apartments in Sao Paulo, and they go straight to the property details page. So all of these are findings that you would learn if you were looking at the bigger picture. If you're asking questions like, um, you know, how could the home buying process be easier for someone as opposed to how could this website be better? So what does this mean for design? Well, next we had some um, workshop sessions with our client to figure out, you know, what information is going to be a high priority to users and how we should, um, how we should organize um, the design. And the first thing we figured out pretty early on is that we found out way more information than we'd ever be able to act on in our scope of work. But, but they were able to take that away and use that for future work on their end, and then we also engaged with them in another project later where this data came, became valuable. We needed to um, support people comparing homes like we saw. That was, a, that was a definite low point for people. We needed to make that a lot easier for them. Um, it needed to support social sharing because, like I said, it's all about relationships. They want to get opinions from, from everyone before they um, make that choice. And, and actually, we talked to someone who invests in real estate as well, and he said that he would never buy a property without talking to his mom first and making sure she was okay with it. And we needed to make it easy for people to find homes near public transit. Especially in Sao Paulo, this was a major um, consideration, and every single person in every single session mentioned it. And finally, we needed to sort, support people who were at any point in the home buying process. So if they're just getting started in the process, or even if they've already bought a home, they're still a customer, and we can still provide valuable information to them. But after we used the map to identify opportunities moving forward, um, we, we didn't stop there. We continued um, to use it as a tool throughout the process. So, we used it to um, prioritize information on a screen. We used it to make design decisions. We used it to um, back up those design decisions when we presented the work in client meetings. And we used it in later phases of the project. So what's the design look like? Uh, this is the homepage of our redesigned website. I don't think it's quite live yet. It's on the verge of being live, so you can check it out. Um, but the idea here is that we're really taking the before, during, and after metaphor quite literally. We have a few page elements that revolve around a central home icon. So at the top we have, um, you know, what can I afford? Beside that we have the search module. Below that some recommendations for homes that fit their criteria. Below that we have a neighborhood recommendation. Um, and actually there's over 300 neighborhoods in Sao Paulo alone, and a lot of people just don't know, there's no way to know about all the neighborhoods. So even if someone is searching within a neighborhood that they know they like and they're not having any luck, they could um, not be aware that there's another neighborhood that would fit their criteria. They just don't know about it. And um, finally at the bottom we have, I need help fixing up my place. So there's a little snapshot of the map to the left there um, highlighting the fact that when people um, move into their home, what they do next is they look for information on local professionals in this new neighborhood, this new area that they're unfamiliar with. And uh, in the live site, there's, there's an animated element here. So if I were to click on, um, I need help fixing up my place, the rest of the page elements would kind of swivel around this central home icon to give the sense of this um, never-ending life cycle. And here's the advanced search. So this was our opportunity to support people in searching for homes near public transit. So we have all the usual suspects, you know, bedrooms, bathrooms. And actually in Brazil, they don't search for bathrooms. They search for suites, um, which is a, a bedroom, bathroom combination. Um, we also have amenities, square footage, things like that. But at the bottom right, we have a proximity feature. So um, people could search for homes that were 0.25 kilometers from a bus or 0.25 kilometers from a subway. 
And then finally, the last option there is close to work. So if they select that, then they can enter their address and um, select a distance. And then they'd be able to see homes that were in a certain distance from their work. So we incorporated this concept of saved homes, which you've probably seen on Zillow or Trulia or other sites here. Um, so this is where we wanted to help people make, uh, have an easier time of making an informed decision when they were comparing homes uh, side by side. So here we have um, a couple saved homes. Each has the ability to add notes, add tags, um, you know, mark it if you visited it, mark it if you've contacted the agent for it. Um, there's an emoticon rating, so a happy face, neutral face, sad face. Um, and then it also includes the distance to public transit and distance to um, work. So at the top of the screen, there are um, some sorting and filtering tools. So if I wanted to search for homes that, um, you know, the building had an elevator, I'd be able to do that here. So we're really trying to make it easier for people to make an informed choice about um, what home they should go with. And on that same uh, vein of saved homes, we've incorporated this element on the right-hand side of the screen that would be persistent. You'd be able to open up this panel on the right side or close it. And basically, it's just an inventory of all the homes that you've saved so far um, so that you can kind of curate a list and then share it out with your friends and family. And that snapshot to the left there of the map, um, you know, we learned that that is critical for people to do at the um, choosing process. That's when they really need the support of their friends and family. So in the, on the main page there, um, we're showing a property details page. And um, we probably made 10 or 15 versions of this page. And just because there were so many um, elements to include on the property de details page, we had um, the images, we had the text description, related homes, social sharing, contacting an agent, neighborhood information, financing calculator, the list goes on. Um, so we were really struggling um, how to handle all that information and serve it in a very uh, relevant way. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about our thinking behind that. So unfortunately, I think this is a little bit washed out, but um, basically we started out by just thinking about all the elements that we would need to organize on the page and then when we uh, waited against the map to see how we should prioritize that information, we came up with a pretty different design. And an example that I'm gonna focus on here is social sharing. So on the lower left, there's links to Facebook, Twitter, um, and email. It's in an, it's in an overlook, overlookable location, um, and it looks a little bit like an afterthought. So when we went back to the map, we realized that um, this was so important to people that we needed to make it more prominent. So in the final design, we have it higher on the page, but also closer to actions, key actions that they would be likely to take if they were uh, sharing a home. So right above, <coughs> pardon me, right above it, there's the option to save the home. So if they're gonna save a home, they're probably gonna share it. If they're gonna share a home, they're probably gonna save it. So our experience is that um, you know, the map is a really powerful tool to make these types of decisions and make designs better. And my takeaway for you is uh, using a customer experience map on your next project is going to help you learn about your users. You're going to over uncover their um, unmet needs. And finally, it's going to fast track your design process. And over the past couple years, Blink has learned um, that customer experience mapping can add a whole lot of value to your design and a whole lot of value to your process. And um, what I hope will come of this is that you will be inspired to use a customer experience map on your next project. And that's what I have for you. Um, feel free to approach me afterwards and ask questions. Thank you. <laughs>